Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and our Instagram page. Um, my name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy. I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador, and I'm lucky enough to get to come here every Thursday evening and paint with you guys um, live on camera. So um, if you guys have been following over the last couple weeks, we've been working on a piece together. So if you've missed the last two episodes, the last two Thursdays, you can go back on the Dixie Belle page and find those last two videos. And we've started this piece from start to finish. So we took this piece out of my storage, we cleaned it, we prepped it for paint, we put our paint on last week, which is a really cool finish that I'll go over a little bit with you guys tonight. <clears throat> and now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding some finishing details to it. I think this is the step where it really comes alive, where you take your paint and add those finishing touches and it brings it to that next level. So you guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions you have along the way. Pop on and ask me any questions you have, and let's go ahead and get started painting, okay? Did you really have to put your eyes up and think about what my name was when you were yeah, announcing? Yeah, you okay. won't, yeah. All right, like a seat filler? Like a stand-in? You know how sometimes like you're in a dream and you don't know if it's real or not? Like a stunt double? Yeah, I was like, who's my husband really? Was it the guy I had a dream about last night? Oh, it's my husband Sean. Oh, that's why you wake yeah. up depressed. Okay. Um... Okay, so let's go a little bit over our finish. Let's do a little recap before we get started. And I'm going to start with recapping the colors that we used on this piece. And then I'll recap the finish with you guys. Okay, so I've got my little cart here that's got all my supplies in it. And the colors that we used on this, I used a little bit of Dixie Belle fluff. Very light on the fluff. I used Dixie Belle drop cloth. I'm going to turn these around as I put them up here so you can really see the colors and the containers next to each other. So we've got fluff, drop cloth, French linen, um, hurricane gray, or I'm sorry, not hurricane, gravel road, and coffee bean. So a lot of people are noticing the, um, uh, uh, yeah. I was hoping nobody <laughs> would notice. The haircut. Yeah. yeah. I, my old salons are finally open in California, so I went and got my haircut. It's a little shorter than I would like, guys. So even if it looks bad, tell me it looks good, please, okay? And then my hairstylist is kind of fun because um, she's a creative like I am, and I don't really care about my hair. It's not my, you know, my thing is not being glam. So I kind of tell her, like, whatever you want to do. So she uh, put a little bit of purple in it this time. Um, not usually my thing, but it's kind of pretty under the light, so I let her play. It's like, what, like I like to do with paint, she likes to do with hair. It's you super know? pretty when the lights are on. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> super pretty when the lights go out. Okay, so I'm going to turn this piece. This finish that we did last week is very textured. It's a little bit aged and grungy. If you come in here, I'm gonna ask Sean to come in here for a minute. I wanna show some of the texture. This is a really good spot up here that I think may actually show on camera. So I want you guys to see, we did a sort of cross hatching motion in here and it left us with this texture in our paint colors. And this is just a result of layering the colors over each other. And you start getting this woven texture in the in the paint itself and so it looks like a very worn fabric i think um and so let's go ahead and repeat this on the side because we did our first coat this does have a second coat on it but i'm going to show you a second coat too because this is a start to finish piece we do everything on camera together oh man wendy speaks the truth what's that sean is such a catch <laughs> <laughs> amen sister I don't know who Wendy is trying to kiss up to tonight, but it's not going to get you anywhere, Wendy. I'm the person you want to kiss up to tonight. Okay, so we put a, a first coat on this piece last week. This is the first coat. It looks very much like the second coat that we're going to put on. In fact, it's exactly the same. All this piece is, is two coats of exactly the same finish over each other. So I'm going to open my paint. Uh, my colors again, fluff, drop cloth. Um, French linen, gravel road, and coffee bean. And they're kind of a warm gray. So I've got, you know, my white's not a pure white. It's nice and creamy. Brings a little bit of warmth to the piece. Um, so I started last week, we worked, we started working the dark colors up. And this time I'm going to start working the lighter colors down. And I find that that gives me a better balance of um, when I'm doing these layers of colors. If I alternate working the dark ones first and then come back and work the light ones first, then I get late, that layering effect. 
It's never going to be in the same place twice. Now, I don't want to, you know, kind of put any pressure on you, but Wendy's been waiting for this all day. I don't want to disappoint anybody. All right, there, now I like Wendy again. Now me and Wendy are back on good terms. Um, I'm probably, I have three brushes out, but I'm probably going to land at two brushes. These are my Dixie Belle mini brushes. And I say two because I'm probably going to use one for my whites, which is the fluff and the drop cloth. And then I'll use one for my darker colors, which is the um, gravel road and coffee bean. So how many brushes do you have? One, two. Uh, uh, one, two. Uh, <laughs> the count from yeah. Sesame Street. <laughs> nice touch. So classy. It's my IQ. Um, and then I could put I could put French linen on either one, my dark or my light brush, because it kind of falls in the middle. And I don't worry about paint contamination. Um, it's really so little paint that I'm putting on, and I'm just touching the top layers of my paint. So this is kind of a dry brushing technique. I'm going to start out with a little bit of my fluff on my brush that will be my lighter brush. I'm going to start right up here in this corner, and now I'm putting coming back in with a little bit of uh, drop cloth. And I'm just going to use this kind of cross-hatching cross motion. And that gives me the texture. That's the paint going over each other. And alternating my colors a little bit, I start building up these layers of color and texture in the paint. So for blending, do you prefer synthetic or natural bristle? Much, much, much prefer a, nat or a synthetic bristle brush. So you guys, natural bristles will give you more texture more texture. Natural bristles are for texture. I like natural bristles when I want to um, add texture. So things like dry brushing, when you're looking to get texture from your bristles, that's when I use a natural bristle brush. I have a blog post up on my website at brushedbybrandy.com that talks about this, that talks about choosing the right brush for the job that you're doing. Um, so synthetic bristles will give you that smooth, uh, less brush strokes, a more refined finish. So when you're blending, that's usually the finish that you're after. This is probably one I could do with a natural bristle brush because I am adding texture. But I'll tell you what, guys, I use my uh, minis for just about everything. They are my favorite brush. And, um, and so even though I'm adding texture here, the mini is working great for me. If I was doing a smooth blend, I would not even question it. 100% a synthetic brush. I want to apologize for the camera wanting to go in and out of focus, and it's because you're doing some crosshatch action. Oh, sorry. Help move slower. I want to apologize for Sean apologizing about my... I just want to apologize for you apologizing for, <laughs> for my apology. Apologizing. We'll forgive For you. copying my apology. So you can... I'm just alternating colors. I've been going... I, so far, I've only touched my lighter three colors, which is the French linen, drop cloth, and fluff. And I'm just alternating, you know, I see here where I've got a darker color underneath. I want to put a lighter one over top because that the contrast is what I want. It does me no good to layer colors on top of each other. I have a spray mister bottle, which just has water in it, just has water in it. And that's because sometimes my paint starts to set up a little bit and I want to keep it moving. I want to stretch it because these are very thin layers using very little paint. When I want to stretch it, I just add a little bit of water and that lets me keep moving it around, getting these brush strokes in it that I want. This is my Hurricane Grit. I did not change brushes, but I'm going to go ahead and let it mix in. So my color scheme is going to be kind of lighter on this end and go a little bit darker as I get over here. So you'll see I'm going to start using those darker colors as I get to the bottom and I'm going to weave them in up the side over here. This side is my lighter side, and that's because it's wrapping around from a lighter side on the front. I'm confused. Painting, weaving, <laughs> what are we doing All here? these terms. You'd think, you guys, that Sean would be literally the best painter around here, right? But it takes talent. He, he watches these lives every week. I mean, he looks like he's watching. Well, that's because I've painted open. my eyelids, so I actually sleep oh, with Oh, well, know. even that is like a... I learned that in high school. That's a heck of a faux finish. Yeah. Like, eyes are really hard to get right. I didn't say they look similar. <laughs> you're, I'm you're, always <laughs> winking. <laughs> yeah. One eye's a little droopy. Squinting. A little bit to the left. <laughs> it just makes me look like I'm in thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I am going to pull out another brush, and that's because I definitely am going into darker colors down here as I get to the bottom. Now, to answer Michelle, you do not paint the back. I do not. So this is the back of my piece right here. 
Um, I'm gonna send you guys I have a blog post on that too, the reasons I do not paint the backs of furniture. Um, there are a few situations when I might, and that is if it's a piece that would be going out in the open so it's not gonna go up against a wall. You know, sometimes a little side table might be going out in the open. Um, I've had a customer bring me a piece that went up against her open stair railing, stuff like that um, when it makes sense. Jewelry armoires are usually a piece that you might see the back of. And then I take cues from the manufacturer. If the manufacturer has finished the back, I probably want to finish the back too. Not because I'm trying to compete with the manufacturer, I'm just taking a cue from them on finishing the back of a piece. So those are a couple tips on finishing the backs. Otherwise, it's a waste of paint, you guys. Um, and in hundreds of pieces, I have never had a customer say to me, I cannot believe the back of this is not painted. Never. What? Never. <laughs> Mostly because I would probably steer away from those customers. <laughs> like, really? That's why I don't buy your furniture. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty happy with this. I've got some nice layers going on. My first coat really gave me the, the um, coverage I was after. So this is just kind of refining my finish, getting my texture down. I've got these colors kind of woven in together, my darks and my lighter colors. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of coffee bean down here at the bottom. I added some water because I, I put so little coffee bean on my brush. I don't want it to overpower. So that little bit of water. And then I can just kind of give, give a few like really dark streakies in there. Streakies. All right, so that's kind of our finish. That is our paint finish. A lot of cross hatching, layering the colors where you see one is darker, add a lighter over top. If it's lighter, add a darker over top and you're gonna get that contrast. It will build up the contrast for you. If you wanna see more of the paint finish, check out the video last week because that was when we did our um, entire first coat on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my paint aside. We're going to turn this and I'll show you the next step on here, which was putting some clear coat on. Now you were only using two brushes. Two brushes, right there. five colors. And I split the brushes, uh, one, one stayed in the lighter, one stayed in the darker. And that's because you guys look at my brushes when I'm done. See, I kept one dark and one light. It's got a mix on there, but my colors are kind of mixed on my, on my piece. So it doesn't really affect it. But if I only use one brush, it really starts making a soupy mess and you can't even tell the distinction between a light and a dark color anymore. It's just gonna be a medium brown. That's what I'm gonna end up with. So at least two, I maintained some level of distinction and that's where I ended up. So you can see how I end up with a light, with a light and a dark brush. So, because this is kind of a worn finish, you guys, I felt like um, putting a sheen on it with a shiny clear coat would not have been appropriate. So, oh, I think I just put paint on my face. Okay, well, I'll figure that out later. Um, I just touched my face and it felt wet. <laughs> Hope, I'm hoping it's fake. Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah. um, so what I chose to use was Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. If you're um, just getting comfortable with putting on clear coats, you guys, flat is really, really, really forgiving. So think of it like when you put paint in your house. If you have flaws in your wall, you wanna use a flat wall paint because anything that's got a higher gloss sheen, whether it's a satin or a semi-gloss or a high gloss finish. Are you trying to do hula? Like, that's my problem. What's going on? Um, it's gonna show, it's gonna reflect light more and it's gonna show imperfections. So if you're worried about that, your flat clear coat it gives you that level of protection but with the forgiveness of a flat sheen um, when you're using flat clear coat you want to make sure you stir it really well it settles more than any of the other clear coats and that's because it has little particles in it that make it a matte finish um, and they settle to the bottom I think the technical term is they're happy particles yeah happy yeah. happy trees, it's a scientific happy fact particles. they're mattifying particles matte m-a-t-t-e um, so stir your flat clear coat really well. I use this regularly. It doesn't matter. I still, every time I take it off the shelf, make sure it gets a good stir. And you want to dig the stuff up from the bottom and reintegrate it back into your clear coat. And then, this is the side here. We're going to clear coat. This one already has two coats on it. They're nice and dry. Um, 
and I'm going to use my Dixie Belle applicator sponge. So this is the blue sponge that you can get from Dixie Belle. And you can either pour this into a separate container or it fits right into the mouth of your jar. Mm -hmm. So, and then I just fill my sponge. It's a damp sponge, so I've gotten it wet under the sink and then I just wring it out until no more water will come out from it. So it's a little bit damp. The reason you want to use a damp sponge with your clear coat is because um, your, it's a sponge. It's going to absorb whatever moisture you put onto it. And if that's your clear coat, your sponge is just going to absorb a whole bunch of clear coat. And then you're going to waste it all when you rinse it out. So giving it that dampness means that your clear coat can just sit on the surface where you actually can use it. Before you apply really quick. Yes. Uh, if you're doing like a table and chairs or something and you gator hide the top, you can still flat coat the sides. Yes, right? yes, absolutely. I or love the chairs. Mix, mixing the sheens, putting a nice gator height on the tabletop, but then your legs and you know the underside of your table has a flat on it. That's a really pretty look. I do that all the time. I'll do the body in a flat and then give the top, you know, a wood top with a little sheen on it. It looks really nice. Um, you can also layer these. So if you want to put um, you want to put gator hide on the top so you get a little bit of protection. You can put flat over it to dull the sheen of the gator hide if you want. Now, the level of protection you're, you're going to get is, is from things you set on top is going to be whatever you put on top. Okay? Um, but it will protect your finish underneath. So once I fill my sponge, I'm just going to dip it into my uh, flat clear coat. And I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to run it in long, even strokes all the way down my piece. Now, I don't want to come and be doing this. That's how you get streakiness. If it's streaky going on, it's going to be streaky when it dries. Uh-oh, you're in trouble. Heather's watching. Hey, Heather. I was just talking to Heather before this. Um, so you want to make sure you're running long, even strokes all the way down the surface of your piece. When you start seeing that you don't aren't getting the coverage from your clear coat refill your sponge a little bit and then you can run it in those long even strokes all the way down okay i'm going to come across and do under this top i'm going to do this side right here and i can tell where i've gotten because the sheen has changed on my furniture piece i always make sure when i'm putting a clear coat on too that i have a brush with me um, and that is because if you have detailed areas your clear coat can start to drip so it's going to want to gather in crevices like this right here so I can just take my brush run it down that crevice and then I'm not going to get a drip there just to clean up drip marks and places where you have brushed your sponge on with a little bit heavier clear coat okay let's make sure I get that let me get this inside corner over here and then I'll show you because I just did a spot that's going to end up a little bit drippy I can I can repeat it on this side where it's easy to see I can't see it. Okay. So I brushed over it. Now sat or flat and satin clear coat are really user friendly because if I feel like I've missed a spot, I can also come back and it stays open for a little bit longer. So I can brush over it a little bit. If I see a brush stroke, it does have a little bit of open life. Now you don't want to wait 15 minutes and then come back and brush over it because you, that's how you'll get um, brush strokes in it. I'm saying brush strokes, even though it's sponge strokes. Is that a word, sponge strokes? So then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna clean up this crevice right here where my clear coat just got a little thick and then it got a little thick right down here around the leg. So anytime you're doing details with your clear coat, same thing with, uh, with a medallion, like this is our would you bed medallion that we added last week. So I can go like this. I'm now you dampen your sponge before you use it. I do, this is a damp sponge, absolutely. Okay, so I put my clear coat all over this medallion here. And then in all of the littlest crevices, it's, it's a little too heavy. So I just kind of feather that out a little bit. Take it back off again where I've got heavy spots and that's gonna keep it from dripping. Then come back, wait about five minutes and come back and take a look at it. And then you can see if you had a spot you didn't notice and your clear coat has started to run and you've got a drip, clean it up. So don't just put it on and walk away and forget about it. Come back and check on it after a few minutes and look for those drips. That wasn't, that was just a variation of my paint. Okay. So could you throw satin over gator height? Yeah, you can. You can layer them all. They're all friendly together. They're water-based clear coats. So they're all friendly together. Um, 
Gator hide is the most protective of the Dixie Belle clear coats, but you can layer them together. Okay, so if you've been watching over the last couple weeks, you might be wondering what our finish looks like. And I had showed you guys a couple weeks ago we were going to put a transfer on this. And the transfer that we're going to use is this one here. This is from Hocus Pocus. Um, if you guys want to see their transfers, I put a link at the top of my page at uh, Brushed by Brandy. I just added it before I went live here today. Um, is the link to the Hocus Pocus transfer that we're using and then also to these Would You Bend medallions that we put on the side, these ribbons here that I love, by the way. Um, so this is the transfer we're going to be using. And um, I, I like transfers like this because we're going to cut this up tonight. We're going to take this transfer apart and layer it how I want to layer it. Um, so not all transfers are created equal, you guys. In fact, um, I think it's, it's really important to know that when you're choosing a transfer, they're all different. Just like every paint brand is different, and there are different ways to apply them. So Hocus Pocus transfers do a little bit better applying them over the top of clear coat. That might not be how you've learned to do transfers, but you want to use a Hocus Pocus transfer over the top of clear coat. So I applied a clear coat on my paint, and we're going to put our transfer on. The front does already have a, a coat of that flat clear coat on it. So this is called the Hardine de Roses transfer. It's huge. Um, you want to be careful when you're setting your transfer down that you don't let it roll onto each other because it can stick to itself. But I'm going to take this transfer and we're going to cut it up. The first thing I did was kind of look at if I want to get an idea what this looks like on my paint background, I can hold this up and that lets me see how my colors are going to show against these pink roses. They're pink and white. And I think it's really pretty. It gives kind of a softness to this gray finish. So can you put the transfer over stain? You can. You should wait 72 hours if you're putting a transfer over stain. Um, I want to flip this to itself. I don't have anything. I'm just going to have to hold it and really be careful that I don't let this roll onto itself because it wants to come loose from the backing sheet. So, what do you have to do to use this? Wants to roll. Don't. Do I'm gonna weigh it down. There we go. Now, I don't want to break too much of your concentration, but I got a color question for you. Yes. If by chance you don't have coffee bean, yeah. Is there something similar you could use, um, or even using like a midnight sky in there? Yeah, I was gonna say midnight sky. Midnight sky means a little bit blue, but there's a lot of colors in the Dixie Belle line that will take on whatever color you put it next to. So if you put, uh, it's midnight, midnight sky is actually a soft black. If you put it next to this and in the small quantities that we use the coffee bean in, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna look like a dark gray is what it'll look like instead of the warm brown tones. So I'm going to start cutting this up and we're going to start just piecing this on. So I'm just using a pair of scissors and this is an easy to cut transfer because I can just cut around the clusters of the flowers. So I'm just going to take it one cluster at a time. I will not use this entire transfer on this piece you guys. I'm going to get at least two pieces out of this transfer. It's huge. So, okay. Go ahead. Okay. You're okay. So my image for this is that I want to kind of um, take the transfer and I'm going to put it on the darker color. So I'm going to let it flow down around the side of my piece. I'm going to layer these flowers around the side. And that's opposed to just taking the transfer and putting it on as a giant square in the middle. I can take these flowers and make them any shape I want to by cutting them all out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weave them down the side. They'll probably come a little bit around this corner here and then maybe even a little bit up onto my top, onto my wood top up here. But I'm gonna start one piece at a time. So I'm gonna take this first piece I cut, and I can move it around so I can see, hmm, does it look better like this? Do I like it like this? This one does have a cut edge on it. So I can take this and take advantage of that cut edge, and if I use it on the flat edge of my dresser, I don't have to cut that now. I'm gonna cut the top of this a little bit. Just has another piece on the top of it, and I don't need. To, I don't want to use that. And then I'm going to cut this uh, the side. And 
And that's because I want the flowers to run right flush up to the edge of my drawer. So I'm just cutting away the excess, the empty paper that's along the side. So I can run it right up to the edge of my drawer. Does it help to throw a top coat on first and then put the transfer on? With Hocus Pocus, yes, you do want to do that. Hocus Pocus transfers uh, generally take better over the top of your clear coat. So that's exactly why we did that here. Different transfers that may not be the case, you guys. So if you're not sure, um, we have a lot of public groups. Focus Pocus has a public group on Facebook um, and a page on Instagram. And so do other transfer brands. And you can, you can go into those public forums if you're not sure and you need to answer that question um, really quickly, go ask. There's well, I got, no such thing as a silly question. I got some of, somewhat of a scary question. If you put a transfer on and decide later on you don't like it, I wish there was an easier answer for that. You can scrub it off with steel wool and mineral spirits. It's adhesive, you guys. It's adhesive. It's like taking a sticker off. But when you scrub it something like that with mineral spirits and an and adhesive like steel wool, you're probably going to damage your paint a little bit. So I've never had one where I have to take it off and I don't have to fix the paint, too. They usually go hand in hand. Okay, once I've got this on here, I'm going to take a X-Acto knife. Where are you going to take it from? <laughs> well, I was going to take it from here if I could find mine. Uh -huh. I just brought, bought one that's bright yellow too. Here's my black one. Well, we'll take this black one. Nice. I'm going to cut it. I've got the edge of my drawer right here. I'm going to cut it. I find it's easier to cut my transfer when they're still attached to the backing. Okay, and this piece is going to get attached down here. Let's go ahead and, and start attaching these. This is going on to a curve. I'm going to go ahead and press it into the curve and then I'm going to work it up around the top of this curve. This is just a fluted molding right here and I came to the deepest part first, the deepest part of my curve, and then I'm going to work it around. Now how long do you typically wait once you top coat it and then put the transfer on? So my top coat on the front is dry. I did it last night. So I would generally wait overnight before putting a transfer onto clear coat. Okay, and then I'm going to press it around this curve right here too. Come down and it's going to go onto this drawer right underneath. I'm just using the applicator stick that comes in the package with the transfer. Okay, since I'm done with this curve at the top, I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece of the backing paper away so I can just focus on the part that's going to be on the drawer below. Okay, so now they'll be free from each other. It loosens that backing paper so I'm not constantly pulling at it. The backing paper doesn't have any flex to it really. And then I can get rid of this piece. It won't be in my way as I'm doing the drawer underneath. Digging my stick into, um, it's got several levels of fluting on this molding. So I'm working each one just one piece at a time. and then I can get rid of that piece. I'm just going to run my finger over this and get it nice and seated on there. So we have another question from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, you in the back. <laughs> well, Hocus Pocus transfers fit on small items such as jewelry boxes or is it best on bigger furniture? So Someone guys, needs a visual. It's like this transfer right here. There are certain transfers you can look at the design and you can cut them up into smaller pieces. So whether you want to cut a single flower there are some transfers that are larger than others too. So you can look at the transfer sizes on their website and it will tell you the dimensions. And then you can also look at what it consists of. Is this one I can cut up into smaller bits? Is it, is it flowers or is it one solid design that I could not, that would look funny if I tried to cut it apart? How about on a jewelry box? It's been on someone's floor for some time. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. <laughs> And then I like to, once I've rubbed over the top of the transfer one time, I will find a corner that's loose, and then I'm going to start pulling the transfer away as I'm rubbing it on. And this lets me see, see there's an area that I needed to come back and rub on. And as I pull, I pull it away slowly, and then I can see areas that I need to come back and rub a little bit better. And I want to make sure I get the bottom of this really good. 
and then I'm just about done. I can take. All right, I'm going in. Finish this piece off. Okay, and then I can rub, rub over it with my fingers. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there, that it's nice and pressed into my paint finish. And I can even take a light abrasive, like one of the Dixie Belle finishing pads. Oh well. I almost died right there. Yeah, that would have been interesting. How is the uh, halo effect? Um, the 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 um, hocus with the hocus pocus. The hocus pocus transfers are actually really well known for having minimal halo, and it goes away even more. This is against this is a lighter transfer against a darker paint color. Once I rub this on and I put a clear coat on it, the Hocus Pocus transfers are really known for having minimal halo. So that would be, these would be great for using over dark colors like our gravel road and coffee bean here, caviar. I'm going to have to move that because I'm going to cut this transfer. I don't appreciate your attitude. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and do another piece. So I'm going to take and let's cut another piece out. I'm kind of just choosing them at random, no rhyme or reason. Except I'm focusing on the flat, this flat edge of the transfer. Should focus on the floor. Because it works with the flat edge of my drawer. Okay. I'm using my paint to hold this backing paper down because I don't want the transfer to roll when I'm not using it. And then same thing, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the edge of this. I'm holding it to the backing paper. So how do you decide whether you want to use a transfer, decoupage, or a stencil? There's no right or wrong way, guys. I kind of usually choose that piece first, and then I work my way backwards. I will pull color inspiration from a paper I chose, or in this case, from a transfer I chose. I, you know, I wanted to use this transfer. What colors would it look good on? So I usually work my way backwards. Oh, I've got a little piece of dust stuck under my transfer. Let me get that off. Oh, it's on top of my transfer. It's paint. That's what it is. Okay. So now I did the same thing. I've got this flat edge right here. Works really nice up against the flat edge of my drawer. I layered it right over the top of my last transfer so it flows seamlessly. <laughs> Those look like Costco scissors. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you one guess. <laughs> the, Just one. The fireball? <laughs> Fireball June, our resident Costco expert. They are Costco scissors. Props to Costco tonight. So this one, I don't have the drawer edge that I ran into. I don't have a molding. This one's pretty easy to go on. Nice flat surface. I'm gonna pick up a little corner if I can with my fingernail. Maybe I can get it with my razor blade. There we go. And then pulling it back slowly to see any edges that are areas that I need to pay attention to. This is going super easily, you guys, over this clear coat that we put on. It's just releasing, it's just taking right to my piece and it, it doesn't take a lot of effort to put this on. So yeah, so I usually work my way backwards. I'll choose the transfer that I think would look good or maybe it's one my customer wanted me to use, the transfer my customer liked. And then I'll choose a paint, I'll choose my paint colors to coordinate with it. Okay, see how easy that was? What was that, like a minute to get that on? And then I do rub over it with my fingers first and that's because I want to feel for any air bubbles. That's something I can't feel when I'm using the sponge. So my fingers tell me if there's any areas first and then now I know I can rub over this without having um, spots that I might pull up because they're not, they've got air underneath. So this transfer looks really good against this dark gray background. When I put my clear coat, I, I'm going to do another layer of clear coat right over top of this. And when I do that, it's going to take away even more of this halo. Okay, so I'm going to keep building this transfer up. So, where are we on time? Okay, I want to make sure that I get to you guys. I want to decorate one of these medallions that we did too. Um, so I think you get the idea for transfers. I would keep cutting up pieces of this rose and I'm going to just keep layering them one on top of another. So just keep cutting up pieces and I can place them. I can play with it before I attach it. Does it look better this way or this way? And then I can kind of puzzle piece them together all the way around the front of this piece. So it's going from this straight boxy transfer and it's going to
going to really become something very organic and natural looking that fits with the shape of my piece. I also hear people getting or worried that, you know, uh, people see transfers over and over again. No two are ever applied the same way, you guys. So by applying them in different ways and against different colors, you get totally different looks. You can take the same image or transfer and get a hundred different looks out of it that people have never seen before. So, um, so that's what you'll see next time you see this piece. But I want to come over here and um, we're going to do a little bit of glazing and waxing. So let's talk about glaze, you guys. I don't like glaze. I don't lie to you guys that I like it because I don't like it. I actually really don't like glazing. One of my least favorite things to do. Could you grab Are you going to make me work? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. This cabinet right here, I need baby oh. wipes. Come on. No, wake up. Um, okay, so this is Dixie Bell Black Glaze. Um, Dixie Bell Black, excuse me, Dixie Bell Black Glaze. Yeah. This okay. game? Yeah, that giant cabinet over there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's the old yeah, room. Um, Dixie Bell Black Glaze is a soft black glaze but you can make it to any shade you want to make it. Thank you. Um, glazes are water-based, so you can tint them with the paints. So I like my black glaze dark. What's the like name of that dark. transfer again? This is the Hardine de Roses transfer from Hocus Pocus. If you guys go to my Facebook page, right before I got on here, I put up a link directly to that transfer. It is in stock, and you can find that right at the top of the Thank page. you, Heather. She put it on there. Thanks, Heather. The name. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of my coffee bean paint. This was not a full container of glaze, you guys. It was a partial container. I'm going to take a little bit of my coffee bean paint, quite a bit of my coffee bean paint, and I'm going to tip my glaze to a darker color. Because I can make glaze whatever color I want. I'm the boss of me. No. You are not the <laughs> boss of me. That's not true. Um, so color-wise, what's is caviar darker? Then Cav coffee bean? Caviar is a true black. Coffee bean is the color of a coffee bean. It's a dark, dark brown. But caviar is the true black. So I could tip my I could tip my glaze to a true black if I wanted to. I tinted it with the coffee bean. So it's more of a gosh, I don't know, espresso color, I guess. So, you know, you can tint it whatever whatever direction you want. I feel like the coffee bean goes with my look because I use coffee bean in my finish. And then I try you guys, like if you guys already have a color on hand, you know, if you were doing this finish, you would already have coffee bean on hand. So use that color. It's going to work fine rather than, you know, you can, you can go and invest in another one, but use what you've got first. All right. And I'm just going to take a brush and I've got my, this is now my glaze tinted with Dixie Belle coffee bean. I'm just going to dip my brush into it. And remember, this surface has already got a clear coat on it. When you're glazing, you want to have clear coat because that's going to make it easier for you to wipe away your glaze. And I'm going to brush it into all these crevices here. These are all the things that bring this finish together, you guys. Paying attention to um, adding a little bit of glaze, a little bit of wax. I always say it's that layering of products that really gives it depth and dimension because any of these on its own, kind of unexciting together is what gives it a finished look. It's what takes it from products and puts it into a finish. So once I've got it dug into all my crevices, it's nice and even. I'm gonna take a rag, like this one right here on top. So what's your deal with glaze? Why do you not like glaze? I just don't like it, it's messy. I really prefer waxes. <clears throat> I just do, anytime I can use a wax, I'll choose a wax over glaze. Personal preference, guys. There's, I mean, as, at least as many people that would tell you they prefer glaze over wax. I just don't. So if you don't like it, why use it? Because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> there's nothing that gives the same look as it. So for example, here, it's going to give me these nice deep points in the crevices of this medallion. It's going to give it depth and dimension against my paint finish. You could use wax for this, but it's going to be a much more subtle look. So go, I mean, you can go look. I did, like I said, I did that blog post on my website at Brush by Brandy about the differences between wax and glaze. Um, I just wiped that back with a dry rag, which takes most of it back. And now I'm gonna take baby wipes, wet baby wipes. Almost wet baby wipes, kind of dry. <laughs> my baby wipes are gonna dry now. 
And now it's a, it's a damp cloth. And because I've got that clear coat on here, I can wipe this glaze away. So now I'll just come back and clean it up from around my medallion with a damp baby wipe. Probably let that sit a little bit too long, so some of these areas I'm just gently paying more attention to to get the excess glaze on. It is tinted with the paint, so it's gonna have a little bit less open time than just the glaze itself would. Um, and then I'm just gonna work my way around this medallion to wipe back away my glaze. Getting oh, I think I just got backhanded. Yeah? Yeah. It's about time. Wendy says it's kind of like Sean on his own. He's unexciting. Yeah. It takes Brandy so to give him depth true. and dimension. So true. Oh, man. That's true for either one of she us. She doesn't know me. You don't know me. Yeah, I definitely let my glaze sit a little bit too long. That's okay. So some of these areas are just taking a little bit more wiping, like this one right here where I got a big old brown spot. It will come off because I've got this sealant over my paint. You can add that little bit of moisture and let it sit for a minute. Do you ever have a problem with the baby wipes leaving lint behind? No, so some baby wipes are more linty than other baby wipes. These are Pampers. Pampers are less linty. Mm. Huggies are more linty. What if you were to apply a little more glaze to to take that off. It. Yeah. I'm gonna let the water do it. So the glaze would be the same as adding water. So sometimes if you just give it a little bit of water and let it sit, I just let that sit for too long. It is coming off. I just got to spend more time on it. I shouldn't have let it sit for that long. On top of my medallion, it looks really pretty though. I just got to clean up this area around it. Let's come do this one, and I'm going to work it in smaller areas. Learning experiences, right, guys? So we can just work it in smaller areas. Come back with my dry rag. Much better. Yeah, exactly. I just let that sit for a little bit too long. My re-moistened baby wipes because they dried out in the package. Those must yeah. be Costco baby see how, wipes. See how differently that is? That gave me no issue at all. So I just need to work this in smaller, smaller sections. Don't give it time to set up before I come and wipe it back. There's a fix for everything. Guys, I, I, um, I never promise you that I do things right or perfectly from the get-go. I learn along the way. I make mistakes. It's like, you know, someone asking how to remove a transfer. How do you think I know how to remove a transfer? because I've had to remove a transfer. And that's the things where, those are the lessons you learn along the way that make you a better painter. I don't think that, you know, being an expert means that you never make mistakes. I think it just no, means that you know how to fix them. I think I would try and then I'd probably throw the piece out. Yeah, some of them <laughs> get frustrating. Today, I, I've never had a piece that I just absolutely gave up and like put it in a burn pile. Like I fix everything. I hide them from you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even Sean has learned all along the way. Sean goes to pick up a lot of furniture pieces for me, and he's learned after doing so many repairs, what do I need to look for in a piece now? What do I not want to fix in a piece now? <laughs> yes, that's what it translates <laughs> what into. Like. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and do a little bit more work on this one, but this one came out perfectly. It's a little wet around here. That's It might look darker on camera. That's just because I've gotten my surface wet again. Yeah. But that's what we, that's the look I'm going after. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black wax. So this is my Dixie Belle black wax, Vesting Wax in Black. It's a really old container. I've said this on camera before. I like old wax when it's nice and hardened for when I'm doing detail waxing. And I'm just going to take a little brush. These are my favorite little brushes for putting wax on. I'm going to dip it into this super old hard wax. And I'm going to use this for shading. I can use it for shading around this guy here. I want to kind of give it a halo effect. This is where I use waxes. Waxes give me a little bit softer of a look. 
So do you give uh, in-person lessons? So, <laughs> I get that question a lot. I was, you guys, and then you know what happened? Little thing called COVID. Little thing called COVID. I was traveling a lot um, before COVID and teaching in-person classes at the Bells and Bow Tour and um, you know, Dixieville had done a couple events and then COVID happened and then nobody was traveling. So every event I was scheduled to do was canceled and no one is looking at rescheduling anything right now. So will I, I don't know, I can't, I can't tell you because I don't see it, I don't have anything in the future, but I don't see travel and um, scheduling those things, events like that, because they're expensive to put on. Um, you know, they want to know people are going to attend it. And sometimes it means traveling and people aren't ready for travel yet. So hopefully 2021 brings some change, you guys, but I don't know what that looks like yet. So do you yeah. have any pointers on what to use if a drawer doesn't go, you don't want the drawer to go too far in to the cabinet? Or yeah, the you need a drawer stop, you guys. You need a drawer stop. I'm going to grab my, that little red dish right there. Oh, man. Okay, so I go going to work again. I'm gonna pull this drawer out a little bit. They're in a little, a little like Ziploc baggy, like a tiny. Ah, uh, here you go. I don't know what they look like. Yeah. Just... You need these guys. You got two different kinds in here. They're little uh, drawer points. You need to stick these in the wood under your drawer. Can you see those? Yes. You can order these off Amazon. They're inexpensive. Keep them on hand. They're little drawer stops, and they're missing from a lot of these vintage pieces, but they're really expensive and an easy fix. You just so can you hold that other one, that one you have in your hand, just so you can see this is more this perfect is the more for visual. That's the more common one. Is those, those two teeth basically are pushed down into the recess of the wood, like a nail almost. Here you go. And you order them, like I get them in these little, you know, I get bigger quantities probably than most, and I just keep them on hand always. What? Same thing. So this is just my black wax. Very little black wax on my brush. Are you going to glaze the uh, bows on the I'm going to glaze the ribbons. Anywhere we did a uh, wood event, I'm going to glaze those. Yes. That's because they've got those low points and the glaze just does, there's nothing else that works like the glaze. But then see here how I'm shading with the wax? Just darkening up the corners of my piece. It's very shady. Yeah, super. And I'll do it over here. I can Ronnie, they go on the frame. Over the top of my transfer, too. I'll just darken along the edges so it looks like finger dirt that's gathered over a long time. This is a darker looking piece. And then Dixieville wax, or Besting Wax, is water based. So if I feel like I got too much of it or I don't care for the look, I've sealed the paint so it's nice and protected. I can wipe it back away, but I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, this is just darker around the medallion. You don't really know why or how, but it's it's a darker area. I could probably, well, I need to take this glaze off. I was gonna show you on this one too, but I gotta fix that first. So I'm gonna give you worst case scenario. This dries, I left it overnight, I can't get this glaze off, forget about it, it's not happening. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it and it's gonna come off, but um, a little bit of paint. I'll just come back with my paint colors and I did that cross hatching, add a little bit of cross hatching right back over top, I just fixed it. So easy, right? So, um, that's kind of our finish on this piece. I wanted to get through finishing it, but I'm not going to you guys because I'm out of time. I've been on for way too long. But we did a lot of finishing touches. Our finishing touches on this are the transfer, the glaze around the medallions, the wax around the medallions and on the edges of our paint. And we put a little bit of clear coat on it. Sorry, we covered yes. a lot of information tonight, a lot of information. But we're going to come back next week and we'll do finishing touches on this, which is going to include, we're going to work on this top here. We've got a treatment for the top that's going to be kind of cool. And then we'll, I'll show you how I finish inside the drawers and around the edges and, and just really wrap this up into a bow for a customer. Um, or even if you're keeping it in your own house, put all those finishing touches on it because it's yours and you want to keep it and value it. Easy, Kim. We'll go over all that. Next can we go to the uh, piece de resistance? Yeah, you guys yeah? can see it. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay, okay, hang on, let me clean this up. 
So you guys have been eyeing my piece next to this. This is what I'm going to post tomorrow. So since you guys are live here with me tonight, you get a secret sneak peek of my nope, piece. Nope, nope, no story time. No story time tonight. Do you have any stories? I do. I always have stories messaging. It's always about me. <laughs> yeah. No self-inflicting pain. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, this piece is really fun, you guys. Really fun. Come okay. Here. One, Ready? two... What do you guys think? Anytime you get to stage with balloons, you know it's a good piece, right? So my pictures of this will come out tomorrow, but the colors on it are spectacular, you guys. Spectacular. Um, I felt like it had kind of a carnival feel to it with the hot air balloons. I pulled the red and white stripes out of the balloons, and that's what I got in the top. I made them kind of chippy. So you see the blue underneath my paint. Um, so it's got that kind of old carnival vintage feel. Um, and then the hot air balloons. This is a decoupage paper by Mint, M-I-N-T. Um, and I'll post it with all the details tomorrow on my page. So the real part of this you want to see, I'm going to slide my rug around. Because look at the paint on the sides of this. Can you see this? Just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Basically every Dixie Belle blue and green is what's on here. And a lot of variation to this. And then it's got a wax finish on it because wax finishes are, they're that old vintage, low sheen. It just was appropriate for the look I was doing. So lots of interest in this paint on the side, smooth as butter, gorgeous sides on this. <laughs> All you need is Hugh Jackman. I know, I know. So you guys, you don't oh, understand. Man. You don't understand. That's my favorite movie. If anybody asks me what my favorite movie is, what's the answer? Greatest Showman. I Wolverine. Love... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My son's name is Logan. Um, I love the movie The Greatest Showman, you guys. I love the soundtrack. I love the movie. I love the theatrics of it. It's a great movie. Oh, wait, I'm going to show you guys this down here. The legs on this have that kind of balloon shape. Can you see them? They have this this balloon shape, and so I painted them to match the hot air balloons with the red and white, and they've got that shape to them, and then the bottom looks like the basket. Can you guys see it? All right. All right, so that's it. I will post that tomorrow with full details, and you'll get to see all the um, all the really pretty photos of this. But, um, but I'm going to get off because I've been on way too long tonight, guys. You can keep yapping. Yeah. I'm just showing just kidding don't get the chippiness of this paint on the it's, yeah, you're always in my way though can you see that that's amazing nope can't see it tons of texture can't see it all right well i'm really proud of it i'm kidding um so i'll post this tomorrow on my page at brushed by brandy you guys if you're interested in any of the products that i use tonight on this video you can go to the link in the top of the post that's my affiliate link for dixie bell um, any purchases made through there support my small business. I always appreciate that. But you could also use that to find a retailer near you. A retailer is someone who carries the paint in stock. If you want to go in and look at the colors and talk to somebody, um, you can use that link for that as well. So go back and you can watch the first two videos on this. We just did our third one tonight and we'll finish it up next week. And we'll have four videos of a start to finish tutorial on how to do every step for this look. Um, all right, you guys, go follow me at Brush by Brandy if you don't already. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. I'll let you go. Have a great weekend.